This episode of Film Riot is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Riot, we're doing some tracking in 3D space. Ness. Yeah, I know. I know. I know it's jelly. Sweet God! Say something helpful, I know it's a TV! Oh my God! Oh, give me a break! Are you stupid? You can hear me? It's just, everything you said was obvious. No, I'm not. How would you even know anyways? You're a grouping of text. Whoa, F you back, you font. What are you, bold? You're looking kind of fat. Yeah, suck that. What? But, I... I didn't mean to. Are you crying? I'm sorry? Text? Font? Words? Sorry about before. Wait. So there's a hot girl at the door? <laughs> you were finally useful, my friend. Hello, sir. I'm going door to door selling magazines to see if you or any of your neighbors would like to buy some. I hate you. I gotta tell you, sir, I'm not taking no for an answer today. Mind if I come in? Logo. Welcome to Film Ride, the show that takes the mystery out of the effects and techniques. One of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. And for the last few weeks, we've been looking at how to slap some 3D goodness into your scene. But the one very important piece that we have not looked at yet is camera tracking. So today, to finish out these weeks of object placement goodness we will jump into three different ways to track your footage so kick josh in the wiener what so the first thing we're going to look at is does your footage even need 3d camera tracking not all the shots in the opening sketch had 3d tracking on them some of them were just the motion tracker right inside of after effects like this shot here since this is a stationary shot just handheld but keeping the same point of view i can just go to the tracker hit track motion, select position and rotation, then select two points at a distance where you want your track to be. So I'll select this area over here and then this one and then track forward. Oftentimes you're gonna go through and make minor adjustments on your track, but this time it worked perfectly. 
Now I'm just gonna create a null, set your target to apply to that, and then apply. So now all my tracking data is on that null. So I'll throw something into the scene, then parent it to the null, and tracked. I doubt it. No way. That's what I was thinking. Now we could go a bit further with this track as well by adding scale. Take this shot for instance. If we go through all the same steps, but this time we add a check into that scale box, now our null will have the additional data from the scale and you will get this which is just the text actually increasing in scale to appear as though we're coming closer to it. So there's a lot you can do with the Simple Tracker, but maybe you need to go 3D up on that mother <laughs> So here we have a shot with more movement, something you want to slap some camera tracking on. Well, the first method I'm going to show you is by using the built-in camera tracker for After Effects. This is one of my favorite additions to After Effects too. All we need to do is right-click the clip, hit Track Camera, then AE goes to work analyzing your shot, which we will get some progress loving up here until bam, done, tracked. Now I flip open my advance and we can check our average error, which here we are doing pretty well right at below one. Basically the higher this number is, the sloppier your track is gonna be. So you wanna stay low. Anything around 1.6 and under is workable, but once you get to 1.6, it's getting a little dicey, but you definitely wanna be as low as possible. If you're getting a high number, try giving the program some more data, like adding in the solve method, the shot type, if it's zoomed, fixed, and click here on the detailed analysis. This will take longer, but as it says, you're gonna get a more detailed track. Next, I'm going to find an area to create my null, which for what I'm trying to do, I think this will work best. So right click, select create null and camera, and your scene is set. And I'll play forward just to see, and you can see here that the null is looking pretty solid. So now I'll bring in my object, place it where it needs to be, and we have this. So Adobe's built-in tracker does an amazing job, but sometimes you come across a more difficult track. And for that, I turn to another plugin, which we'll talk about after we thank Daddy Warbucks. If you're looking to create a business selling tritons, like if the Little Mermaid is she's being rebellious and you need to put her in her place, what do you need? A triton. A triton. So where can you buy a triton? Nowhere. So you, my friend, could jump in on this very much needed company business thingy by creating a website selling your very own tritons. Fight Ursula, you know? Stop bad things from happening to the sea. Why a triton? Because that's what you need to stop bad things from happening in the sea and stop Ursula. But who? No one's in the sea. Domain.com is the place you should go to get your domain name and hosting up so you can get your Triton selling website online. And you can get a URL probably like tritonsellers.com or tritonrebates.com if you want to sell like rebates to Triton. So like maybe you team up with a friend, he makes the Triton website and you make the rebate. What are you talking about? You can use their domain discovery system to get the domain name that's right for you. So tritonsareus.com. Perfect. Bam. That's one little. And also, if you want to get your Triton selling website up and running, use the coupon code FILMRIDE at checkout to score 15% of your domain name and web hosting. So get to domain.com, get your website up and going, and save Ariel. Logo. So we did some simple tracking, then 3D camera tracking with Adobe's built-in tracker, but now what if you need to get more precise? Well, the tracker I love using most is Camera Tracker from the Foundry, which is slightly more complex, but still pretty simple to use. So here we will take the same shot as before and add Camera Tracker to it. Inside the panel, you can see that I have a lot more options, but the first thing I'm gonna do is hit Track Features, and now the plugin will play through your footage finding all the good tracking points. Once it ends, it will go backwards and refine. Once it's completed tracking, I'll hit solve camera, let it go through its process, and we get our data. So here we have the reprojection error, and like before, the lower, the better. So I'll hit okay, and then create scene, which will set everything up. I get my camera and the null in there. But now, similar to before, I will select a point near where I want my text to be, command right click on a Mac, then create null. You can also come down here and use this menu as well. And now I can add my text again, set to 3D, shift pick whip to the null that I made, and bam! Bam me where? Another thing you want to keep in mind when picking your point is the frame error. So when you hover over a tracking point, it gives you all the data you need. The lower number, the better. Of course, this point here will work great, but this one, not so much. So make sure you're picking solid points or you're gonna have a lot of headaches. And of course, be sure that you're picking points that are at the distance that you want your object to be. For instance, if I pick one back here, my text will appear to be with those cars in the background, not the one in the front, 
which is a great thing for compositing, so just keep that in mind. Okay. But now what if your track isn't coming out well? Well, there are a few things that you can do, which I can't cover them all here, but most important are adding in more info for your track, which you can do here in Solve, Lens Distortion. The more data that you can give the plugin, the better job it's gonna do solving your move. And the second is creating a mask. If you have something moving in your scene that isn't part of the background, like this car here, you can tell the plugin not to track that by creating a mask. To do that, first we're gonna create a white mask, throw it on the bottom, then with that selected, we mask around the car and keyframe the mask path to follow it as it goes. Then we pre-compose the solid layer, making sure that you send all attributes, including the mask, into the pre-comp. Next in our plugin, we're gonna set the matte source to matte alpha, then set the matte layer to the solid layer you made. And now we have to track again, but this time the plugin's going to ignore the area that we just created the mask for. Then I'll solve camera and you'll see that our error number has gotten a bit better just from that small bit. So just make sure that if you have something in your scene that's moving that may confuse the track, just mask that sh there you go, those are the basics to get you tracking your little heart out. And of course, there are other trackers out there like PF Track, and I'm sure we'll get into those down the road, but these are the three that I use the most, so you know. Baby Wear! But that is the haps for today, folks. As always, Twitter, right here. And if you're in the mood to lay some sexy filmmaking attire on your body area, check out our Trying store here and follow our Trying Apparel Twitter right here for some discount in action, posting them discounts. And I'll see you guys next week when I make you go back in time in your mind, but just not in one lifetime, like a billion of your lifetimes because the planet's well, it's like a trillion years old. That's science. Action. <laughs> Come on, man. This thing is heavy. Was that not where I was supposed to that go? That was not where you're supposed to go. I was supposed to go in the you're kitchen. In the oh in the kitchen. yeah.